Hey guys, in this video, we're going to go over what are transformers and how they're used. So transformers, you've seen it way back in your GCSEs. Transformers, we know we use them in national grid. So let's say you've got your power station. I know my power station is going to produce some power, obviously. P equals IV, right? The power of my power station is the current times the potential difference. What then happens is that power station is connected to a transformer. And that transformer is called a step up transformer. So what it does is the step up transformer is going to increase the voltage. So it's going to increase the voltage, and again, my power station is going to have some certain power. If we increase the voltage for a set power, that means the current gets dropped. So what that means is if we use a step up transformer, our current for our wires is really low. So when we have these big cables, remember we've got these pylons that carry the electricity all through the national grid to different homes around the country. Those cables all have our wires at really low current. And the reason we have wires at really low current is because of that equation P equals I squared R. Every wire or every cable has a set resistance, right, to the material it's made of, its length, its cross-sectional area. If we make the current really low, what we know then is all that power loss through the cables is really low. So if the power that gets lost through the cables is really low, because we had a really low current, that means we're doing less energy is getting lost as due to heating that wires. So what that means is the power station is gonna have a higher efficiency because we're losing less heat from our wires. We have less power loss because that current was really low. Then, when you get to your home, we have another transformer and that transformer is called a step down transformer. And that step down transformer drops that potential difference. It drops it to potential difference that's safe to use in our homes so that we don't get electrocuted. And in UK homes, it's always gonna be 230 volts or 50 Hertz. So how do transformers actually work? So inside a transformer, we can just imagine it, it is always made of iron. It's normally made of soft iron because soft iron can be easily magmatized and demagmatized. Okay, so a reason again it's soft iron is it's easily magmatized and demagnetized. So what happens is we have our power station, let's say we call this side the first arm, we call that the primary arm, or we call this the primary coil, so that's the first side. The second side we then call the secondary arm or that secondary coil, okay? So this side is connected to our power station and this side is maybe connected to our cables, right? So here we've got a step up transformer. If it's a step up transformer, again, what we're saying is that we're increasing the voltage. So there'll be more coils of wire on that secondary arm. We know there's more coils of wire in that secondary arm because of this equation. Again, if it's a step up transformer and that voltage on S, S stands for secondary, that voltage in that secondary is going to be higher than that voltage on that primary arm. What we know is then the number of turns on that secondary arm is going to be bigger than the number of turns of what coil on that primary arm. Okay, so we use this equation to relate the number of turns of coil to the potential difference or that voltage for those coils. So a step up transformer is going to have more coils on that secondary arm. So what happens is here we're going to have some alternating current. So let's say we've got some AC current going in. So what that means if I have current flowing in both directions, the positive and the negative direction. So I have if I've got a coil of wire with a changing current. And we know what's going to happen here. Anytime you've current flowing through a wire, you know you create its own magnetic field. So that coil of wire is going to have its own, we use B for magnetic field. So we know iron is an induced magnet. So if I have an alternating or change in magnetic field, that iron core, so this is called the iron core, soft iron core, that iron core is going to carry that change in magnetic field round to that secondary coil of wire. So now what I have is a coil of wire with a changing magnetic field. And anytime we have a coil of wire with that changing magnetic field, thinking about our previous video, we know what's going to happen is we're going to get an EMF in just due to Faraday's law. So again, the first side, we know that we have current flowing through a coil. We know we've got current flowing through a coil of wire. We know we get a magnetic field around that wire. We're not way back in our GCSEs. Remember, anytime you have current flowing through a wire, you get a magnetic field around that wire. Technically, we use our right hand. So use our right hand to show the direction of the current and your fingers should do the direction of the current around that wire. So we get magnetic field lines around our wire. So anytime I have current, again, through a wire, I get magnetic field lines around that wire. 
So once I have magnetic field lines around that wire, because iron is an induced magnet, it carries that change in magnetic field over to that secondary coil. Now I have a coil of wire with a change in magnetic field, and that's why then I'm going to get an EMF inducing it. It's a complete circuit, I'm going to get a current. So what we can use then is we use transformers to change the potential difference because we can change the number of turns on the coils of each side of that transformer. Okay, problems for transformers is, if you're thinking this iron is a conductor, I've got a change in magnetic field inside this conductor. Anytime we have a change in magnetic field in a conductor, we just said there's going to be an EMF in just so what we get is these things called eddy currents. So eddy currents are like little loops of current inside that transformer. So again, those things there are called our eddy, eddy currents. Okay, they're called, I don't know if you've seen the show, Ed, Ed and Eddy. It used to be in Nickelodeon. But anyway, they're called eddy currents. That's how I remember it. So eddy currents. And the way to reduce eddy currents is what we want to do is we want to laminate the iron core. So what that means is we just put these layers of insulation inside the iron core between the iron core to reduce the chances to make eddy currents formed. So again, what we say is that we laminate the iron core, and what that means is we just put in those layers of insulation. Okay, layers of insulation. Okay, the last equation I've written here is about efficiency. So what we're saying, if our transformer is 100% efficient, if it's 100% efficient, what we're clearly saying is then that the current in the primary arm times the voltage in the primary arm is equal to the current in the secondary arm times the voltage in the secondary arm. The power, P equals IV, the power in the primary all goes to the power in the secondary. But if it's not 100% efficient, if it's less than 100% efficient, not all of that power is being transmitted into that secondary arm because, again, of these eddy currents that gets created inside that soft iron core. And again, we want to reduce those by making sure that it is laminated.